The wait is finally over. The third expansion from Assassin's Creed Valhalla, The Dawn of Ragnarok is now available across PC, PlayStation and Xbox. And if you're wondering whether it's worth your money and time, then you've come to the right place. A massive shout out to the team at Ubisoft for giving me an early release copy so I could play through it and give you guys an honest review upon its release. We're going to split this review into four parts, starting with the storyline, quests and characters, the combat, new abilities and weapons, the map and exploration of the game, and then finally an overall summary of everything and whether it's worth parting with your hard earned cash. Let's jump straight in with the storyline, quests and characters. Now this review will be relatively spoiler free, but if you didn't know, the premise of the Dawn of Ragnarok is that you can play as Havi aka Odin and embark on a desperate quest to rescue your son Boulder from imprisonment. This DLC will have you racing around Svartalheim meeting a huge variety of characters from Muspels who come from the fiery land of Muspelheim to the blue Jotuns who we have seen in Assassin's Creed Valhalla before and then the poor dwarves whose lands are being invaded. Did. The main storyline took me around 35 hours or so to complete and during this time there were ups and downs, betrayals, intrigue, suspense and a lot of laughter. I genuinely did feel I was completely transported to the realm of Svartalheim and for the most part I was really intrigued by the story and did not skip any dialogue. I also felt, and this is particularly due to the fun of the dwarves, that there was a slight change in tone in this DLC which included a good amount of humour. I very rarely find a game script that I'll find funny, but these dwarves were hammering the jokes home which made a nice change to the usual seriousness of religious zealots in the main game and other DLCs. There's also a good selection of villains in the game and plenty of boss battles with them too. I found myself genuinely whooping as I took those enemies down, whilst also a little sad that I wouldn't have the opportunity to do it again. Of course, like all open world games, the quests were very much find this person, search for this clue, obtain this piece of something, but there is such a joy in exploring this gorgeous looking map and so many different ways to go about it. There were assassinations as to be expected, puzzles to complete, caves to clear out, but it was a good amount of variety and not once did I find any quest to be tedious. Overall, the storyline will keep you intrigued, the quests are pretty addictive and the characters offer some very funny dialogue as well as some excellent insults from all parties involved. Moving on to the combat abilities and weapons and boy oh boy do we have a lot to talk about. Playing as Odin and not as Eivor comes with a huge perk in the form of a shiny new bracer which you'll obtain very quickly into the storyline. This bracer called the Hooga Rip plays a huge role in this DLC as it allows you to obtain mythical abilities such as appearing as a Muspel or Jotun, transforming you into a white raven to fly around the map and much much more. However, before you can activate these abilities, you need to obtain Hooga, which is a new resource that you can gather from specific enemies, Hooga Blooms which are absolutely everywhere in the wild, or by sacrificing a part of Havi's health at special shrines. This is for me where the DLC really comes into its own, far more so than the two previous DLCs as the combat becomes an absolute joy. From running around lava looking like a muspel, to teleporting around your foes as a Jotun with ice wielding powers, I'm currently having endless fun battering my opponents. You also have the ability to raise your foes from the dead to fight for you, which while is initially enjoyable, I actually do prefer to chop those heads off myself. Soaring around as a raven is absolutely needed in this DLC too, as there are a lot of high points that you have to get to, and this puts a totally different spin in how you conquer several missions throughout the game. And alongside this new Hooga Bracer, we have a host of new lightning abilities, including a lightning arrow, bringing lightning down from the sky just like Thor, and getting up close and personal and using it with an axe attack, all pretty perfect accompaniments for the Allfather Odin. And because we have the ability to look like our enemies, this adds a slight spin on the stealth aspect of the game as you can easily approach all opponents to assassinate them. It's not my favourite aspect of the new abilities, but for fans of the relatively limited stealth options in this game, this is a nice added bonus. Now in terms of new items and armours, being which by the way, the only aspect of the Dawn of Ragnarok that you can bring back into the real world, we are treated to some seriously fantastic looking gear. Firstly, we have this absolutely massive weapon called an 8 gear, which was a type of pole arm used in Viking Age Scandinavia and Norse colonies in the British Isles and Iceland. This is a welcomed new weapon into a mass of weapon choices we already have, and whilst not the most incredible addition like when short swords were added, it's nice to have a new toy to play with. 
There's also some new axes, hammers, sea axes and a hunter bow you can obtain too. And with these new weapons comes 5 new armour sets which I have to say all look pretty fantastic. These can be obtained in a variety of ways from gathering specific items to earn a reward to just simply hunting them down across the map. We are also introduced to platinum ingot on weapons which takes some of your favourites and some new weapons from very strong to nigh on godlike which maybe is the point as we are playing as a god. And to complement this new gear and armour set you also have a few new types of enemies to take on. Not only do your victims come with a size increase and orange or blue skin, but we have some new enemy abilities you have to conquer. The Muspel Flame Keepers have the ability to revive fallen foes, so make sure you take these guys out first, otherwise the battles are never going to end. There are also Suicide Muspels that will run towards you and explode, so make sure to keep an eye out for those guys too. Roaming bosses are back just like the zealots of the Order of the Ancients in the base game and they can be really fun and challenging to bump into while traversing the Dwarven realm. There are some fantastically enjoyable and rather difficult boss fights and it is great to feel challenged again. Another fun aspect to the Dawn of Ragnarok that has to be mentioned is the Valkyrie fight arena which is a sort of entertainment of purposes for Odin to relive and show off past battles that he fought and in turn gain the awesome Allfather armor set. Here you'll fight waves upon waves of multiple enemies and bosses, often together, and you can even add conditions to the fight in the form of boasts. This will, for example, have you fighting drunk, enemies could have increased strength, every melee attack does less damage, the list goes on. Having played Valhalla since November 2020 and not finding the base game challenging at all anymore, these trials actually did have me sweating quite a bit and I thoroughly enjoyed all of the challenges. Redder also bases some daily contracts here as well, so you'll find yourself visiting the site a lot. This leads really nicely into the map and exploration of the game which I have to say looks wise is utterly incredible. The colours are really vivid within the three regions of the DLC, all having their own different styles, but the terrain itself is very varied with some fantastically high locations to fly around as a white raven and incredible dwarven structures that are going to give you huge Lord of the Rings vibes as well. This map is around one third of the size of England, however there are lots of underground areas and high peaks, so it takes even longer to travel around than it usually would. It's often with open world games that you begin to get bored of just exploring and instead just chase quest after quest, but I genuinely had an incredible time navigating the huge world of Svartalheim. From the lows of mines clearing out moose spells to climbing high peaks for rare rewards, I do think you'll be glad for this breath of fresh exploration air. It tends to be a joy to look at and because you now have three ways to explore, on foot, on horseback or as a raven, it adds another level of enjoyment, giving us that Odin slash Havi godlike feel that you don't experience in the base game. There are also quite a number of puzzles and clues to locate and complete, which can be a welcome break to occasionally slow down the pace. Overall, the map is gorgeous, the exploration I found more enjoyable than usual, with the multiple ways of getting around, and the actual terrain is hugely different than what we're used to, which helps keeps you glued to the screen. Now to talk about some negatives, and whilst there aren't many at all, there are a few things that grind my gears. You can still raid in the world of Svartalheim, which I suppose is to be expected as it is a big part of the main game. However, where I think they missed a trick was not allowing you to develop your own special Svartalheim squad. Instead, you have the same boys that work with you in England, and what on earth are they doing here? They could have given you the opportunity to have some dwarves in your raiding crew, which I reckon could have been really cool. I did also have a couple crashes during my time in Svartalheim, but this happened very rarely and overall the game actually ran really well playing on PC. So given everything I've just said, I actually think you're in for an absolute whale of a time. The combat and abilities are the game's biggest plus, but it also looks brilliant with a nice story and often some very funny dialogue. If you liked Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you're probably going to love this DLC. Of course, some people are going to say it's not Assassin's Creed, etc, etc, but actually, if you're looking for a really good open world RPG with some Assassin's Creed elements, you're going to like this game. It's definitely much better than the Wrath of the Druids and Siege of Paris DLCs, which I did enjoy, but this is on a whole different level. This is arguably reflected in its price, £33 in the UK or $40 of 40 euros, which is expensive, but it could be a standalone game and I honestly do think it's worth its money. 
If I had to give it a score, it's a solid 8 out of 10 from me, and I think 99% of people playing it are going to have an absolute blast. If you're wondering whether to purchase this DLC and are already a fan of the main game, hesitate no longer, just do it. And if you want to bring super strong weapons with you to Svartalheim, then why not check out my strongest weapons videos to ensure you're coming fully prepared. I will definitely be making future Dawn of Ragnarok content, so why not hit the subscribe button, and I'll hopefully catch you legends in the next one. Until then.